Hey guys, it's Miss Carlson again. We are going to have an overview today on density. We've explored density a little bit in class already with our gummy bear lab. And now I just want to make sure you understand the variables that are involved with getting the density of an object and how density actually works. So, reminder, mass is generally measured in grams, okay, designated by this um, abbreviation G and it is the amount of matter that is in an object. Different from weight because we're not including the force of gravity. Volume then we normally measure in milliliters and that is the amount of space a substance or an object occupies. Now if we know those two things about an object we can calculate its density by taking mass divided by volume and that would give us the ratio of mass to the volume of a substance otherwise known as density. Now, I am going to draw two squares. Let's see. And I'm going to try to get them generally the same size. So, generally speaking, let's just say that both of those take up the same amount of space, they have the same volume. Now, if I use these dots to represent the amount of people. Let's just say this is a, a courtyard, a square courtyard. And these are people, these little purple dots. And this is a different square courtyard, again, that can take up the same amount of space. And these little purple dots are representing the amount of people in that courtyard. Now take a look at that, and I want you to think about which one is more dense? They both take up the same amount of space, but one has more people in it or more mass, let's just say, than the other. So you should have chosen this one would be more dense. And in other words, we could say more densely populated because it has more people or mass in the same amount of volume. So if we get more mass, same amount of volume, we're going to increase our density. And it would be, you know, vice versa the other way around. If we gain volume but don't change our mass, then our density would decrease. Okay, so how do we measure those variables that allow us to get density? Well, for mass, we can take something like a triple beam balance or the electric scales that we used in class to get the mass of the object. And then volume, we can usually measure in a beaker of some sort. And there are also other techniques that, you know, we can use a graduated cylinder, and there's something called volume displacement that we're going to talk about if we're dealing with irregular objects. So if we have a, real, a regular object like this key here, you can measure out the amount of water in a graduated cylinder. So whatever, let's just say right here we have 50 milliliters of water. If we drop this key, we don't know the volume of that key, we can take the displacement here of water, so when you drop the key in the water, the water will go up, and let's just say it went up to 62 milliliters. Pardon my writing, this tool is hard to write with. We can take 62 minus 50 to get the volume of the key, which would be 12, right? Hopefully. Still do math. So the volume of that key would technically be 12 milliliters, or generally speaking, if we're talking about a solid, solid object, we usually like to use centimeters cubed as our unit of measure. So that's just one way if you have an irregular object. Otherwise, we can usually use common measurements like length times width times height for a solid object like we did with our gummy bears, or um, if it's a liquid, obviously pour it into a graduated cylinder or a beaker. Okay, so we can predict the density of different solids and liquids, and there is a common experiment done with this density column here. You have different liquids, and they're all in different layers because they all have different densities. And I'll show you a video in just a second to show you how they did this. You can even experiment with something like this at home. But once you create it, the layer at the top is obviously the least dense because it's floating at the top. 
and then the ones that are more dense are going to sink, right, because things that are less dense float and things that are more dense sink. And especially if you have water, do you remember what we said the density of water is? I'll give you a second to guess. One, the density of water is one, so anything less dense than water is going to float, anything more dense is going to sink, and the same relationship applies to any other liquid. Now here are some examples of density, but probably a way that density can be used. Um, here you have a submarine, and the way a submarine works, as you can see the inner workings in this picture, it will fill up with water when it wants to sink and go underneath, right? So that it can try to equal or even increase or be more than the density of water so that it will sink below it or, you know, kind of be equal if it wants to just hover right below it. And then it will release water once it come, wants to come back to the surface. Same thing works uh, with fish. Um, with their lungs, they can fill it up with water so that they float up or, or, I'm sorry, they can fill it up with water so they can sink or they can fill up with air so that they get lighter and float to the top. All right, here is a kind of cool video that I thought you guys would be interested in seeing and it's going to show you how to make that density column that we just looked at. So kind of cool, right? They even drop objects in it to see where different objects would fall and how dense they are in comparison to the liquids. See there's a bolt down here at the bottom, obviously very dense, made of metal. So kind of cool, something you can probably do at home, but that's basically the gist of density. Alright, I'll see you guys next time.